Swayam Prabha. Digital India. Educated India. Welcome to the lectures on Engineering Mathematics 1 and today's we are discussing lecture number 11 on derivatives and uh, differentiability of one variable. Actually, it is very important to discuss uh, differentiability of one variable before we go for the several variable case in the next lecture. So, what is derivative for a function of single variable? So, let f x y is equal to f x be a function of single variable and if this ratio f x plus delta x minus f x. So, this difference when we make an increment delta x in x and minus the f x the value at x divided by this increment. If this ratio here has a limit a definite limit as delta x tends to 0 then we call that this limit is the derivative of the function f x at the point x. So, that is the definition of the derivative usually we have. So, that limit here when we take the limit delta x goes to 0, if the, this limit exists we call that the uh, that this value is the derivative of the function f x and this is usually denoted by this f uh, prime x or sometimes y prime x or t y over d x that is a notation for the derivative which is the limit of this quotient here when we make the increment in x by delta x and take this difference by the value of the function at x divided by the increment. So, if this limit exists we call the function has the derivative and its value is exactly that limit and the notation here we use for the derivative uh, are f prime y prime or d y over d x. Now, what is differentiability and differential usually? So, this is more formal definition and the reason behind this we will uh, we can easily extend it to to the case of several variable. So, a function f x is said to be differentiable uh, at the point x if when x is given the increment delta x arbitrary increment and the increment delta y can be expressed in the form of delta y is equal to some constant a into delta x plus epsilon times delta x, where this epsilon goes to 0 as delta x goes to 0 and this number here a is independent of delta x. So, the point is that this f x is said to be differentiable if we can write down the increment delta y when we give the increment uh, delta x in x. So, there will be an increment in y that is denoted by delta y. So, if we can write down this delta y as a times delta x plus epsilon delta x, this is a linear term here because a is independent of delta x and plus this epsilon times delta x and this epsilon has the property that it goes to 0 as delta x goes to 0, then we call that this function is differentiable and the first term on this right hand side that means this a times delta x. So, this first term on the right hand side a times delta x this is called differential or the total differential of y and this is usually denoted by uh, the notation d y. Thus, what we have that d y that is another notation for what we call differential. So, d y is denoted by this a times delta x those are the linear term in this expression of this delta y. So, again this delta y was the increment. So, this delta y is as f uh, because the function is y is equal to f x. So, delta y is f x plus delta x when we make an increment in uh, x by delta x and the difference. So, the f x. So, this delta y is uh, f x plus delta y minus x. So, if this increment here delta y we can write down in this form. 
So, this linear term a which is independent of delta x times delta x and plus epsilon delta x then we call that the function is differentiable and this epsilon very important that it should go to 0 as delta x goes to 0 and this a should be independent of delta x. So, if we can do that we call the function is differentiable and now in the next slide we will see that this definition of the differentiability what we have here that we can express this delta y in terms of uh, this a delta x plus epsilon delta x and the earlier definition of the derivative they are actually equivalent. So, let us move to the next slide here. So, here differentiability and the derivative what is the relation or basically they are the same what we will observe now here. So, the necessary and sufficient condition that the function y is equal to f x is differentiable at the point x is that it possesses a finite derivative at this point. So, as written here it is a necessary and sufficient that means if a function is differentiable we have given already the definition of the differentiability. So, if a function is differentiable then it will have a derivative at that point or it if it has a derivative at that point then the function must be differentiable at that point. So, the conclusion is that the both the definition what we have given earlier the derivative and the differentiability they are basically the same in case of the single variable. So, the now we will see that differentiability implies the existence of uh, the derivative at a given point. So, suppose the function y is equal to f x is differentiable. So, we assume that the function is differentiable and what this will imply as per the definition that we can express this delta y increment in delta y when an increment uh, in x is given by delta x. So, if we can write down this delta y as a delta x plus epsilon delta x then this function is differentiable. So, we have assumed that the function is differentiable that means we can express delta y is equal to a delta x plus epsilon delta x. And now we can take the limit. So, before we take the limit we can divide by this delta x. So, this will be like delta y over delta x is equal to a times uh, epsilon. So, a times epsilon and now we will take the limit as delta x goes to 0. So, by taking this limit here. So, this will be delta y over delta x. So, the limit is equal to here a there is no delta x and uh, a is also independent of delta x as per the definition of the differentiability plus this epsilon and the limit epsilon uh, delta x goes to 0. And we know that this epsilon has the property that it goes to 0 as delta x goes to 0. So, in this case we get now here this limit delta y over delta x. So, this is the quotient in the derivative we have seen f. Uh, so, this term here is nothing but uh, uh, f x plus delta x and minus f x and divided by this delta x. So, this here is uh, f x pl plus delta x minus f x and divided by this delta x limit delta x goes to 0. So, this term here becomes the derivative which we have uh, discussed in the previous slide. So, that means we get here let me erase this. Okay, so, we get this here f prime x is equal to a because this will go to 0. So, what we have observed that if the function is differentiable then the derivative f prime x this is the derivative here when take the limit. So, the derivative is nothing but this a which is written here in the linear term a which is free from delta x. So, this a is nothing but this f prime x the derivative. So, what we have seen that if the function is differentiable then the derivative exists and the derivative is equal to a this uh, is given in this expression of delta y. So, if uh, f x is differentiable then f prime exists and has definite value a. The next we will see that if the derivative exists that will imply that the function is differentiable. So, we assume that f prime x has definite value a that means this f prime exists or the function uh, derivative exists. 
So, in this case we have that this is given here f x plus delta x minus f x over delta x has the limit which is equal to a because we have assumed that the derivative exists. So, that means this limit exists which is equal to a this is what we have assumed and now since this limit is equal to a we can define or let me just explain you here. So, if for example, the limit delta x goes to 0 of some function is equal to let us say l then what we can uh, write down out of it that this f x minus l we can define this difference in the neighborhood of uh, point x is equal to some epsilon for example. So, what this epsilon will have the property that this epsilon will go to 0 when delta x approaches to 0. So, if we take the limit here, so epsilon and then the limit delta x uh, goes to 0 will be equal to this limit here delta x uh, goes to 0 and f x minus l. So, since the limit f x goes to l, so this will go to 0. So, if we write down this expression here for epsilon as f x minus l, then this epsilon must have this property that epsilon will go to 0 as delta x goes to 0. So, we have a similar situation here this limit delta x goes to 0 of, of this expression of this quotient is given as a. So, what we have written down that this quotient f x plus delta x minus f x over delta x we can write down as a plus. So, the value of this limit which was l there. So, a plus epsilon plus epsilon and this epsilon will have the property that epsilon goes to 0 as delta x goes to 0. So, this concept we will also use later on in many uh, lectures. So, having this now out of this limit we have in uh, introduced this epsilon which has this property that it will go to 0 as delta x goes to 0 because we know that this limit uh, of this quotient is nothing but a. So, this epsilon must be 0 as delta x goes to 0. So, in this case now we can rewrite this as f x plus delta x minus f x and this delta x we can take to the right hand side. So, we get a into this delta x and plus epsilon into delta x and epsilon has this property that it goes to 0 as delta x goes to 0. And now this implies because we got this expression here that this difference or this is we can also call like delta y. So, the delta y we can write down as a into delta x plus epsilon delta x and this a was independent of delta x because this was the limiting situation here of a. So, a was free from delta x and now we got that this f is differentiable because that was the definition of the differentiability. So, this implies that f is differentiable. So, what we have learnt now that the differential of the function which we have introduced as d y which was this term a into delta x. So, this differential of the function is the product of its derivative because a is nothing but the derivative of this f and the arbitrary increment delta x. So, this term here uh, is, is delta y yeah? oh, sorry d y. So, the d y which is called differential is nothing but the product of its uh, derivative and the increment delta x of this independent variable or we can write down simply that d y is nothing but the f prime x and delta x. What else we have learned that having the derivative or having the differentiability they are basically the same concept when we are talking about function of uh, one variable. Well, so moving next to the geometrical interpretation of differential. So, we are talking about the differential. So, what do we mean here in geometry now? So, what we have introduced already that the delta y when the function is differentiable then delta y we can write down as a times delta x plus epsilon times delta x and we have also seen that uh, when we take this limit. So, we got that this a is nothing but the f prime x this also we have observed and this we have introduced that 
the differential y is nothing but the a times dx or a is nothing but the f prime so f prime dx now we will see here what do we mean by this increment and this differential in terms of the geometry so let's consider here we have the function y so this is x axis and this is here y axis so we have uh, this curve y is equal to f x or the function of one variable and let us take a point x here. So, the value uh, on this curve. So, the point here is x and f x. So, this value here the height is f x. So, this point is x into f x and then we make an increment in x by delta x. So, we have another point here x plus delta x and we take the value of the function as f x plus delta x. So, this point becomes uh, x plus delta x because of this x coordinate and the y coordinate. So, it is uh, the value of this function at this point f x plus delta x. Now, we draw a tangent here because we are talking about the derivative. So, that will come into the picture. So, we draw a, a tangent at this point x which is denoted by this dotted line and then this is naturally delta x the increment we have given in x. So, this is uh, delta x or, or d x term. Uh, we will come to this point why we have written this d x and then this is the increment in delta y. So, when we have made an increment in uh, delta in x by delta x then this is the change in delta y. So, that is a change in delta y because earlier the y was this one and now the y has become uh, this one here at this uh, point. So, now the difference here is the delta y or the increment in delta y this one and what is this dy? dy is this first derivative here f x, f prime x and d x. So, if this is the derivative, so the tangent uh, f prime x is nothing but the tangent of this angle. So, that is equal to this divided by this one. So, here this distance from here to here will be nothing but the f prime into this delta x because in this triangle you can find figure out that this tangent of this angle here is, is f prime at this point x and this will be equal to, to this distance which we will call as uh, dy and is equal to this delta x. So, this d y is nothing but delta x f x or this distance here is f prime x into delta x. So, this distance is f prime x into delta x. This is what we are calling as uh, d y. So, let me erase this. So, this is d y in our definition. So, now one can observe that this was delta y which was the increment in y increment in the function when we made an increment in x by delta x and this is d y the differential of y in our definition. So, what do we observe here that this delta x and the delta y are the changes in the function when we changes x by delta x then there was a change of delta y in the function and this d y was the change in the tangent. So, along this is change along the tangent and this is change along the along the function itself when we make an uh, increment in x by delta x. So, we have also noted here that d y and d x d y and this d x measure changes along the tangent line. So, this is here along the tangent line we have made the change here by delta x or we can call it d x both are same and here that is the change in the tangent line with d y. So, that is the uh, notation here d x and d y. On the other hand the delta y and delta x measure changes for the function f x. So, here when we make an increment delta x then there was a increment uh, delta y in the function y. So, this is we have denoted delta y and this delta x and delta 
or dx they are the same because change in the x whether we denote by this delta x or delta y they are the same. But along this y axis this is a change in the function and this is a change in the tangent uh, line of the function. So, there is a difference or from the formula itself we can observe because we have this uh, definition d y is equal to the derivative of this f prime x and d x and if we substitute for y is equal to x suppose y is equal to x. So, y is equal to x and then the derivative will be 1 into uh, d x or delta x. So, because this was originally taken as uh, the linear term which was uh, a times the delta x originally this was defined as a f prime x delta x. So, the d x will become just the delta x or we can understood from this uh, uh, note that d y and d x we uh, take the notation the major changes along the tangent line. So, we have the d x and we have the del d y and then we have again this delta x and then we have here delta y. Okay. So, now we have the geometrical interpretation for the differentiability again just uh, we have rewritten that definition. So, a function y is equal to f x is said to be differentiable at the point um, x naught y naught if it can be approximated in the neighborhood of this point by a linear function. So, this is another interpretation of the differentiability we have written earlier in terms of that linear expression and then epsilon delta x. So, here also we have another interpretation that this function is said to be differentiable if it can be approximated in the neighborhood of this point by the linear function. So, what do we mean by this mathematically that f x if we can approximate this function in the neighborhood of this x naught y naught pi point by the linear function. So, this is the linear function here f x naught plus x minus x naught a plus epsilon and again this x minus x naught. So, this is a similar uh, definition what we have earlier. So, if we bring this f x naught to the left hand side this will become like delta y and we have here delta x here and a terms plus epsilon and again delta x the change in x. So, but here now we are talking about that if we can express this f x by a linear function in the neighborhood of x naught uh, y naught point. So, what does that mean? This is the linear function and plus we have epsilon and this x minus x naught. Note that this uh, epsilon goes to 0 x as x goes to x naught. So, this term is pretty smaller because this is also going to 0 and this is also going to 0. So, we have somehow the quadratic term in uh, in terms of x the difference x minus x naught and we have the linear term here in terms of x minus x naught. So, that means this function we can approximate by this linear function at least in the neighborhood of this point x naught. So, this is a linear function of x and the equation of the tangent of the curve this is nothing but the equation of the tangent uh, at the point x naught f x naught of this uh, function y is equal to or curve y is equal to uh, f x. So, again like this is x axis y axis here and then we have a uh, some curve y is equal to f x and at this point x naught this is a point x naught f x naught if we draw the tangent then what we want to say here that if the function is differentiable then we can approximate in the neighborhood by uh, a linear function and the the accuracy of this linear approximation will depend that where we take x. For example, if x is this point this is uh, very well approximated and if it is a far point from this x naught then we are not approximating well. So, at least in the neighborhood of this point if we can approximate uh, by a linear function then we call this uh, function as differentiable or equivalently or mathematically if we can write down this f x in terms of uh, the linear function and plus the epsilon and this the difference x minus x naught and this epsilon also goes to 0. So, then this is not the linear term in terms of this difference it is a non linear term here. So, we have this linear term plus this non linear term and this is 
the equation of the tangent which we have written down uh, in this case. Now, the testing of the differentiability what we have learned so far. So, we have basically the three concept one was the existence of this derivative which is evaluated by uh, this uh, quotient and taking the limit. So, if this limit exists we call that the function has derivative or the function is differentiable because uh, that was equivalent to, to the differentiability of the function. And we have denoted this by f prime x or d y d x uh, or y prime. The second concept we have seen that the delta y is equal to d y plus epsilon delta x that we can write down this expression in terms of d y and epsilon delta x and the d y was a into delta x the increment and this is called the differential term. So, this is another way of testing differentiability that we can write down this delta y in this form. The third one was which is which can be deducted from this term itself. So, the delta y and we take this d y to the left and divided by this delta x and then take the limit since this epsilon goes to 0 as delta x goes to 0. So, this expression must be 0. So, we can use either this one to test the differentiability that this quotient must be 0 or we can use this one or we can use the derivative one. We have the three concepts. So, the example one we will show now that the function f x is equal to x square is differentiable. It is a pretty simple. So, we have y is equal to x square and then the delta y that means f x plus delta x minus f x this will be equal to. So, here f x plus delta x that means x plus delta x whole square and minus f x. So, minus x square if I expand this you will get x square plus delta x square plus 2 times x delta x minus x square. So, this term get cancelled and we will get uh, 2 x into delta x and delta x square. So, we get precisely here 2 x delta x delta x and into delta x. So, we have this form this is a times delta x and the epsilon times delta x. So, here this epsilon naturally it goes to uh, 0 as delta x goes to 0. Here this term 2 x is a the delta x is given. So, we have that uh, format which we have used for the differentiability that means this function is differentiable and the derivative value which is this a the, the term sitting with this delta x in the linear part is f prime x and this is epsilon. So, this implies that the function is differentiable and its derivative is 2 x. Alternatively, we can show that this quotient here f x plus delta x minus f x over delta x by taking this limit delta x goes to 0. So, again here f x minus f delta x is given already there. So, we have the 2 x delta x and plus delta x square term there and divided by delta x and then we will take the limit at delta x goes to 0. So, we have here this 2 x term and plus the delta x term and then we take the limit as delta x goes to 0. So, this will go to 0 and we will get only uh, 2 x. So, we have this showing that this limit exists for whatever for any value of x. So, the function is differentiable in the whole domain or we can also show that this here the ratio. So, when delta uh, y minus d y if we take so this is delta y and minus this was d y. So, we take this will be delta x square and when we divide by delta x. So, we will have delta x only and taking this limit delta x goes to 0 this will go to 0. So, that was another uh, the, the third concept of showing the differentiability either by expressing this delta y in this format or alternatively taking this uh, quotient here and limit if this exists or this one. So, here this example shows that y is equal to x square we find delta y and d y at x is equal to 2 when delta x is equal to 1, delta x is equal to 0 0.1 and delta x is equal to 0 0.1. So, the point here x is equal to 2 and these are the increment. So, we have the delta y is equal to f x plus delta x minus f x and the d y is given as f prime uh, d x. So, if you make this table here, so for example, this value we can evaluate here delta y, delta y is f, the x is 2 plus delta x we take first as 1. So, 1 and minus this f 2. 
So, here this is f 3 and x x square. So, 9 and f 2. So, x square this will become 4. So, this value is 5. And so, here it is 5 and now d y. So, simply from here f prime is 2 x. So, 2 x into uh, d x or so d x is delta x uh, is the same. So, here 2 and this 2 x. So, this will be 4 and d x is 1. So, we will get 4. Similarly, while taking delta x, we will get this 0 0.41 and d y will be 0 0.40 and while taking a smaller delta x, we will get delta y as 0 0.0401 and here we will get 0 0.04. Uh, 0, 0. So, in this case what we have observed when delta x is large obviously these two the delta y and d y they are uh, not the same. So, uh, the difference is large between the two it's, it is not approximating this d y is not approximating this total change in y, but when the when this delta x is smaller. So, if we make a smaller increment then this d y is well approximating this delta y term and that was the meaning of that uh, if we can approximate by the linear term at least in the neighborhood of the point. We can also test the differentiability of this function f x is equal to x square uh, 1 plus the cube root of x minus 1 whole square at x is equal to 1. So, this function. So, if we take this delta y as this difference because at x is equal to 1. So, 1 plus delta x minus f 1. So, 1 plus delta x we will submit here. So, it will be like 1 plus and this will become delta x square and the cube root minus f 1 will be 1. So, we will get only the cube root of delta x square. And now, we will check uh, whether it is possible to find a number a such that this quotient here which we have just talked that if we can get this uh, quotient and the limit is 0 then we call the function is differentiable. So, we will check whether we can find such a a so that this quotient here the d y is a into uh, delta x over d x over delta x if this quotient is 0 then we call the function differentiable and if we cannot find such a a then we will call the function is not differentiable. So, we will take this quotient here delta y minus a delta x over delta x. So, we can divide by this delta x. So, we will get a there. So, you have delta y over delta x. What is delta y over delta x? So, delta y is here cube root delta x square and when we divide by this delta x. So, here it is power 2 by third and this will be minus. So, let me just compute this one this term here delta y over delta x term delta y was delta x uh, 2 third and then we have delta x here. So, this will be delta x and 2 third minus 1. So, delta x power minus 1 by 3. So, this is here and then minus a in this case and we take uh, now, what we observe that this uh, function here is approaching to plus infinity when delta x is approaching to 0 from the right side for example, when delta x is positive or this is approaching to minus infinity when this delta x we are approaching from the left side when delta x is negative and approaching to 0. So, in that case this limit whatever a we choose this will be plus infinity when delta x approaches from the right side when delta x approaches from the left side this will become minus infinity irrespective of this number a. So, meaning that we cannot get such a constant. So, that this quotient has a finite limit or sorry the 0 limit this should be 0 for the differentiability. So, we do not have a, such a a a finite number a. So, that this quotient has the limit uh, 0 as delta x approaches to uh, 0. So, this limit in fact does not exist. So, in this case the function is not differentiable at x is equal to a. So, coming to the conclusion we have uh, seen that this function is said to be differentiable if we can write down delta y in terms of uh, this expression a delta x plus epsilon delta x where a is independent of delta x and epsilon is a function of uh, delta x such that epsilon goes to 0 delta x goes to 0 this was one definition we have discussed and this term a delta x is called the total differential 
uh, of y at this point x y and is denoted by uh, delta y. And the value of a is nothing but uh, it is uh, the derivative of f at x. Again we call uh, a function y is equal to f x differentiable if this quotient exists which we call derivative, but both the definitions for equivalent we have seen. And what we also realize now introducing that differential d y is equal to f prime uh, d x that this is not just a notation for f prime, but this ratio of the two differential because d y was f prime into d x makes sense. So, writing this d y and d x separately uh, makes sense and that we will uh, also use uh, now in the in the in the next lecture which will be on the differentiability of the two functions and very important that we first understood this differentiability of the of the function of one variable mainly these three concepts having the derivative and then this linear expression and also writing that limit to 0 gives us differentiability. So, there in case of the two variables what we will see that just having the derivatives whether partial derivative with respect to x and partial derivatives uh, derivative with respect to y will not help or will not be equivalent to, to differentiability. The differentiability will be a different concept than having just the partial derivatives though in case of one variable if we have uh, the derivative of the function then the function is differentiable or the other way around. So, that will be in the next lecture and uh, these are the references we have used to prepare this lecture and thank you very much.